fucking. <gasps> oh, coffee spill, coffee spill, coffee spill. Hello, my name is Miro, and if you are new here, welcome. Also, if you are old here, you are welcome as well. And if you're gonna be nasty here, then you are unwelcome, <laughs> most unwelcome. Today, I am actually re-filming this video. I do not know what happened. There is no explanation. I was filming it yesterday, and I went for, I think, hour and a half recording the video. And when I looked on my computer, because for those of you who are watching the video, my camera screen is still broken, so it's connected to my computer so I can see what's happening. I, it was just not recording. I started to record and there is like a five minute clip and I'm not touching the computer nor the camera, it just cuts out. The camera didn't overheat. There is more than enough memory on it. Who knows? Let's hope that doesn't happen again. I also have new glasses. It is very odd because this is a cylindrical lens and it's my first time having a cylindrical lens and my dioptry is slightly larger. So things are a bit strange, but we are getting used to things. If I do fall down and, you know, smash my face, Upgrade. So today we are starting with spring chores or actually March chores. I planned out some of the things or most of the things but like in rough of what I want to do in March and I've actually wanted to do this for a while. I think for a couple of years back I wanted to do these because I have this book. This is something, this is in Serbian, this is something that I read as a child. It's an encyclopedia of indoor plants and garden plants. This was a gift when I was like in the sixth or seventh grade of elementary school, so it's quite old, but I just adore this book. I'm just gonna see if there are any illustrations made by me because <laughs> what I used to do quite a lot uh, when I was a kid, because a lot of these plants you could not get here and well, you still cannot get them here, I would instead draw them now when I think about that, that's not a cute story. That's kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> drawing, drawing plans that I can't get. On the back of this book, they have a very neat list of things that you're supposed to do in each month of the year, right? So I don't know, I thought it would be kind of nice to have this similar structure in my videos, but I never really started it. You know, you can see here things to do in January, in February, and then things to do in March. There are some orchids here. I swear they're the most beautiful photos here of people's homes, of greenhouses. No wonder I turned into who I am, right? Like this book is filled with photos like these of private greenhouses. And some of them are public greenhouses where you can see a crap load of plants. But anyways, we are in March. And as you can see, March is a double page. January and February were not. I don't care what you say, spring is officially beginning and there are more things to do. And one of the reasons there are more things to do for me here is because I will be leaving on the March 15th. I'm going to Sweden for 10 days from March 15th to March 24th. That's nine, but okay, 10, we'll say 10. <laughs> And I'm going to be at the Hoya Fair at Nordiska, Tradiska, I don't know. I will put the name here. I will be there, I think, on the 21st and on the 23rd, and I will update you on Instagram stories. If anyone wants to come, you can meet me there. I do not expect anyone. <laughs> but if you don't show up, you're dead to me. I'm joking. But anyways, where was I in this whole story? Spring chores. We're gonna do spring chores because I have to leave and there are plenty of things to do. I, as you can see, this cabinet here is looking ooh, not the best. Um, those are some propagations that we have to water. I never know how to use the mirrored image. Like, what's up? <laughs> so these propagations here, I need to water them. Those are for sale. I think one of those boxes is what I've sold and I think it's the other one and those will get picked up, I think, this weekend. So this is essentially what is left, and then these here. But I need to move those into the tent because I will do something else with this cabinet. There are several plans, but I don't really know which way to go with it, and you will find out why. But I want to finish my Hoya wall, which is not going to be only a Hoya wall. There are some new plants there, and there are some new plants here. Those are not all mine. Only two of them are mine. Three of them are mine. Okay. 
three of them are mine. Um, so I'm going to show you the new plants that I got recently. I think only one Hoya, some orchids. And we're just going to talk about things that I will do and what are my goals for March and spring here. And I would like you to tell me before you, or maybe you can do it even after you hear my plans, what would you like to achieve in March? So I have wrote down my things that I want to do here, just in the rough. And then um, I, I got this for editing and well, I'm gonna say it's for editing. I actually got it for something else, which I'm not gonna show you something for the channel. But anyways, I wrote it on my iPad, um, the whole plan for the month of March. And I actually find this super cool. There is the whole list of things that I'm going to do here in March. And there are things happening every single day. So that's a bit scary. But anyways, we're gonna develop that plan a bit more, not in the video, don't worry. I'm not gonna hold you that long. I'm just going to tell you what I would like to do. So the Hoya wall. Also, I would like to take care of my grow tents before I leave. I have, as you know, three grow tents, two big ones and then one small one that is horizontal on top of the two others. And the plants in the small one are getting way too big. So I want to move them in one of the bigger tents and some of the smaller plants I'm going to move up. And this is sort of a good idea, but not really because those plants on the top are bigger plants and they do get watered less. They're in self-watering pots and the small plants that I have are not. But, you know, I'm just going to have to get used to climbing the ladder and um, getting up there to water the small ones because plants grow really, really well in that tent. I don't know what I did. I think it's like the distance from the light. I just hit the sweet spot and I cannot recreate that in my bigger tents for some reason, but they grow like wild in the small tent. And I really wish I knew what I did so I can share it, but I don't. And before we continue, I just wanted to share something because I did an unboxing yesterday in the video that you will not see. I received something at the beginning of January, I think like January 3rd or 4th, which makes sense when you see what it is. So it's in this little pouch. It came from Patamit. You know him as SC Plants or Hoya Study Corner on Facebook. He's the one that makes the Hoya cards that I talked about on my channel before, which you can order. So Patamit sent me a calendar. There is a Hoya calendar and I haven't, I opened it yesterday. I opened it yesterday and there is a, even a new year card. Happy new year. I, I don't know, I have no excuse. Like, I'm late even for the Chinese New Year. <laughs> this is Hoya and the Epithets in Memorial Calendar. In this calendar, what you will see is a lot of people who have contributed to the genus and Hoyas that are named after them. So on one side, you have the calendar. And I'm not really sure these dates, is this when these people were born or died? I don't really know. But on the other page, you can see some of their photos, their names, the plants, of course, Clementiorum IML1752, the best Clementiorum. So we're just gonna start with February. This is where we are. Yep, that is when I <laughs> unbox this calendar. Excellent, excellent. But you know, it's not too late to get Follow my example. Start getting your calendar in March. I also think on my iPad, the uh, template they downloaded is like a yearly planner. It's a digital yearly planner and I downloaded it in February. So if you're asking me, the year is officially starting now. I wanted to show you some of the plants that I got. This is something that I got for my wall. It is a Tillandsia and it, I did not get it with a name. I tried to look it up yesterday. So if you know, do let me know. It's not flowering yet. They are about to open on this Bract, Bractia, I'm not really sure. I know the name in Serbian, I don't know the name in English, but I think it's a Bract. So the flowers are about to open here. And I do believe this is a cultivar or a cross. I think it's called Tillandsia Samantha, or that is what it looks like to me. I don't know, I'm not really sure. I was really hoping to get a Xerographica. I used to have that one. I actually used to have quite a lot of them, but you know, at one point I just got a bit overwhelmed there and I let them dry out and they died. You're not going to have the same faith. I'm going to water you. But anyways, very cute. 
it fits well on the wall. I already tried it out. So if I could find a couple of similar looking ones, like Xerographic, I think I would add that to the wall. That's one of the plans that I got purely for the videos. Okay, it's purely for the videos. Oh my goodness, this is so heavy. These are not all my plans. These are plans for my friends. I was supposed to ship these out, but a lot of the plants were missing in the package. So I'm waiting for them to be shipped again. But I got a couple for myself because... Anyways, let's first start with the Hoya. Hoya is from a different place. Now, this is Hoya species Hon Thom. And I do have a guess provided to me by Rachel, Colette Conroy, what this could be. I will write the name because I cannot pronounce it. I tried yesterday and I already forgot. So this is most likely Hoya oblonga cutifolia. Uh, you might know it under the name Hoya graviolens, but now graviolens has been put under, hold on, <laughs> oblonga cutifolia, so it's now just a synonym. This is from Vietnam. It has a very nice splashy leaves, very small, very cute. The plant is uber wet. That's German for you. It's uber wet. I don't know. Maybe it's not German. It's very, very wet. It arrived three weeks ago and it's still so wet that I need to repot it soon and sort that out and, you know, check out the roots. But that's the first gorge Hoya that we have here. And then we have a philodendron. Did I say I was not getting any more arrays? Was that me? Are you sure? Are we sure that I said that? This is philodendron, green Congo variegated. And you know, in the photos, it did look a little bit more interesting. It really reminds me of Jose Bono, which I do have, uh, slightly larger than this one that also needs to be taken care of. I decided to upsize it this year to really let it grow out, which is the decision that we made while at the same time we're downsizing. You know, downsizing can mean different things for different people. For me, clearly it means getting more plants and making them bigger. It's a new definition. Look it up. So this philodendron, super cute, definitely tissue cultured. You can see the crap load of plants in there. And I, you know, it's been here for three weeks. I didn't want to do anything with it in the beginning, but I think we will need to separate some of them because it's just so filled with plants. Yeah, I definitely need think that needs to be taken care of. I can see that the leaves are bumping into one another, not really growing normally. And maybe we can first separate them into three, four clusters. And then from there, we will separate them more as they grow. Because some of the plantlets are very, very small, but that's for a different video, not today. And then another one is uh, a seedling, Anthurium affinity basse. I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but you know, it's not a Hoya, so it's fine. It's fine to mispronounce if it's not a Hoya. It's a cute seedling. It has very interesting petiole. I do have to tell you, I don't remember this plant looking like that. When I was looking at buying one a couple of years back, first of all, I decided no, because it was 200 euros. This was 15. So, but I'm just gonna look up some of the photos. I guess it sort of looks like one. Some of the photos that I have seen are like this one, where the nervature is just very prominent, almost iridescent. Not all of them look the same, so I don't know. We'll see how this will mature. It will be interesting to see it grow. I will repot it also soon to a mix that's not peat something else, probably bark and moss. I also got a couple of orchids and I'm trying to find an excuse as to why. The only thing that I can come up with is because I like them. I like them. So first one that we have here is Pephiopetalum American Hybrid or some variation of the American Hybrid. You know, these don't typically arrive with a tag. I used to have this one, it grew to be quite big, but I did buy a Philanopsis from a garden center that arrived to me with a virus. And I, you know, I suspected a virus right away, but some of the people told me that it's not a virus. And I let it sit in my collection and, you know, six months to a year later, 
all of them had the same symptoms and I had to toss all of them away and I did not get orchids for quite a long time after that. I was just very sad that that happened, but clearly we are over it. We're over the sadness. I used to grow these in Lekka and they grew really, really well, but this time I'm going to leave them in organic mix and I would like to get a couple of more, maybe smaller ones. My puffy petalums were, I had like three very, very big ones and I would like to try some smaller specimens this time. So naturally I got another big one. And this is Pinocchio, I believe. Um, it, the flower is a bit spent there, but this is a consecutive bloomer, so you can see it already has new buds there. And even though this label says here to keep it from 15 to 25, I have found from my experience that 19 to 20 is best to keep it going, keep it blooming. In summer, it just doesn't really want to bloom all that much. But it's a very nice big plant. I, again, I don't like these leaves as much as I like these ones. These ones are just, you know, more succulent, perhaps more firm. These look a bit floppy to me, you know. But some Puffy Petal and Pinocchios do have mottled leaves, you know, with spots. Not this one. Um, so again, I think that's probably a variation among the seedlings there, but yeah. This one looks a bit more plain. I really don't know what's up with this leaf. Is it too heavy for itself? My Pinocchio also got quite big. So the way these grow is these are sympodial orchids, I believe is the term. I've, it's, I'm sorry if I mistake something because it's been a long time since I did orchids. It doesn't grow like Phalaenopsis, which will keep growing new leaves. This will grow new plants and from each new plant it will flower. So this one has not flowered yet. This is a new plant. So we can expect a flower spike there at one point, probably not soon. And there is a small plantlet there. So they will spread like that. And you can see on this American hybrid, we do have a spent, is that visible? I do not want to tip it too much, but there is like a spent flower spike. So this is the new plant. And then we have yeah, this is another. I'm just like spilling bark everywhere. <laughs> this is another new plant, but before that we had this, which flowered, and unfortunately when this is done, it's done. Um, we then have to wait for the flower on the new leaves. And then I got, this used to be called Oncidium Twinkle. I'm not really sure if the name has changed. I got the yellow one. Um, you can get the white one and the red one. I would love to have all three. I love Twinkle, Oncidium Twinkle. And once again, I'm sorry if it's not really Oncidium. They're very small orchids. It's not in bloom yet. All the buds are closed, so that's great. And if I do find two other colors, I will 100% get them. So that's just, you know, me informing you. I do hope these don't blast, but we'll see. Probably needs to be watered, but even if it doesn't bloom, I'm still going to be happy that I got it because it will bloom. I had these, I had, I think I had white and yellow. I never got the red one. I just never found it, but I did rebloom them a couple of times successfully. So they're not that difficult in my opinion. And they're so cute, these bulbs. I love them. Little chubby bulbs. This is an Apanthes. I always wanted an Apanthes, okay? I always wanted them. I think they're super cool. I never grew one, so I don't know anything about them except that these prefer to be in high light. They like to be warm, these specific ones. And you're supposed to keep them in peat. I know that much, so we're probably not gonna be repotting anytime soon. And then you're supposed to fill these pitchers with water and you know they like distilled water or rain water. So that's all I really know. I don't know much but it was very cheap so i got it because i wanted it for a long time and if you're gonna judge me i don't care it's also for the wall it's gonna look so nice i think on the top of the wall so as you can see this is not going to be there are going to be plenty of hoyas it's going to be a lot of hoyas but there's going to be a lot of other plants and then i got some epiphytic cacti okay <laughs> I had one of these. This I got as a gift. It's an Epiphyllum angeliger. 
Angliger, however you want to say that. I do want a different one, one of the Selenicerius, I think with Skiocardium, the one that looks similar but nicer. I would like to get that one, so I'll be on the lookout for that. So this is also going to go in the wall. I think it's going to look cute. And then I got a Ripsalis, which once again, I have to tell you, was cheap. It was an offer that I could not refuse. It is big. I have not ID'd it. I think it's not so easy to ID them. It has bloomed, but I did not take any photos. And I might need to do something with it before I put it into the wall because of the size. It, it is not a compact plant. However, it is a pretty plant. He is gorgeous and he is big. He is a presence in the moment. <laughs> you know, it's a big plant and I might need to divide it up or something. We'll see. Again, it was like 20 euros. So I was like, okay, if you say so. It does look a bit rough in some spots. It was definitely grown in higher light. You can see on the top. But honestly, I don't care. I will need to inspect it carefully. But yeah, that is for the wall. I think that's all the plants that I got. If I did not forget any, I show you the Marantha that you have seen. So, you know, the judgment is in the different video for that one. Now I think we can get into the plant chores that I would like to do this month. All right, how do you open this planner? What I wanted to do is the Hoya wall, as I told you, and that's gonna take several days for sure to really plan that out. I'm gonna go for a more of a finished look. I think in the past what I have done is I wanted it to be sort of like a growing experience, you know, and plants did grow really, really well on that wall, but we had to restart some of them because of neglect. And now I would like to have just a different wall, different looking wall. I will talk about that in a, in a different video, but yeah, the small tent, we need to do that. And then with this Radsta, I, I kicked out some of the Hoyas from here because they were getting into the lights all the time. Then I used it temporarily for propagations, which is fine, but I think I would like to use it again for plants. But I think, again, I would like to use it for my own plants. And there are a couple of plants here. First of all, um, I spent I spent like two hours the other day looking for those little holders for the Radsta because I wanted to install one of one more of these shelves and then I discovered I don't have another shelf. That's all I ordered, two of these. One is with the Caudatas and one is here. But I wanted to do three levels for my Lacunosa types um, that you can see here, sort of. Let me just, let me fall down. You can see those. There is a video about those. I wanted to do three levels of those and then to leave Caudatas here and something else on the bottom because I do have quite a lot of small ones that I just restarted and I think they would look super cute, but I don't have the shelf level. I could take the one from here, move it here or vice versa, whatever, and then put a glass level there for the Caudatas, but I don't know what I would do then on the bottom because it just can't attach glass. There is no adhesive tape that will hold any lights, not here at least. So I'm not really sure, I have to think about that. So one of the options was to once again have two Hoya cabinets, but then I thought maybe aeroids, maybe I will put, I only have two aeroids, so maybe those can go there. And then on the bottom I can do once again smaller Hoyas. So these two aeroids that I have can go there. And then I do plan to order a couple of more. If I tell you that I am looking at some variegated locasias because I have killed all of the regular ones, so the natural progression is to kill the variegated ones, right? They're quite affordable right now and I would like to try them out, especially the, the ones that I was looking at are quite easy, uh, variegated alocasia odora. And the green version does really well. I used to have one as a kid, a big one in the yard so they can go outside during the summer and they can stay out for quite a significant period of the year. Um, so I don't know, I think I would like to try that one. And then a couple of other aeroids. 
yes, I am getting back into aeroids. I saw that some people are saying that I got them into the Hoya hole, into the Hoya downward spiral or whatever you want to call it. Fern made a video recently where she got a lot of Hoyas and she is like, you know, spiraling down the Hoya hole. I am at the bottom. Hello. You will, you will meet me there. But also because I watch her videos, I started to get some begonias and other plants. So it's like, I did that to you, you did this to me. So if you want to really blame anyone for me getting other plants, leave a comment on her videos and say it's her fault. And by the way, my begonias are doing really well. There will be a dedicated video about them. I don't care if you don't care, you will start to care. They're looking very cute. And it's going to also be a DIY video, which we know I excel at DIY. I'm basically the DIY king of YouTube. That is a title I gave to myself and no one agrees with it. <laughs> I have plants in the hallway. I have plants in the kitchen. These are the plants that are sitting left behind in the boxes, propagation boxes like this one. Plants from the wall that need to be repotted, plants that need to be restarted purely for aesthetics. They're everywhere around the house. And before I leave, I need to sort of get everything in order. I have a lot of plants sitting around that need to, you know, they need some work. And it's not a tremendous amount of work that I need, but I was saving this for a video. And, you know, the whole Sweden trip was sort of unexpected. You know, my friend Farah, I'm gonna visit my friend Farah. We were talking about it back and forth. And then I was like, I just decided to pull the plug out of nowhere, which is how I usually bring the decisions or make the decisions. I want to get everything in order, not perfectly, but you know, roughly in order before I leave. So then we can spend the entire April getting things really polished. There are a lot of ways that need to be retrellised. I'm not going to do that most likely now. I'm just going to make sure everything is watered, sprayed from mealybugs. I don't have any at the moment, but I did caught couple and I've been spraying ever since. And you know, I, it's just a regular, I think spring treatment, I'm spraying with paraffin oil. I will talk about that in the chores video. I would just like to get like a rough sketch of what this growing space will look like. And then in April, I think we will have to take a lot of these plants out. I need to paint the room because of the mold. I'm fighting mold. And it's not because of the plants or the humidity. It's just that the way this room is built, as I said in previous videos, choices were made that were not really good from a building standpoint and it tends to get moldy. So we will need to sort that out in April and I'm most likely not going to go too crazy on repotting the plants. I think a lot of them can wait. Some of them can't. So I will repot them in my plant shorts video, but I do really need to make a list of everything that is an absolute must that we need to do in March and what it's not. And I do have about two weeks here, so it will be pretty intense, <laughs> I would say. I also wrote some things that I no longer understand. It says big philo. I, that, I, that's big philodendron, but I don't know what that means. Oh, yeah, I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to rearrange the room a bit. <laughs> I, but I don't think this can be done. I'm a bit annoyed by my Ateba Poense, which is absolutely massive. Let me just move stuff around. I'm a bit annoyed by him. You know, maybe I would just move the camera. Why am I not using my brain? He is quite big. Um, so, he actually doesn't look big. There are a lot of leaves. I t he's not small. And I do have my Jerry Horn in the hallway. You can see he's not small. That's not a small plant. Um, that's a plant that takes up a significant portion <laughs> of this space. And I do love it dearly. I do love it dearly. But we need to, I was thinking to move my rotsters around and sort of fit them here, but not next to the radiator because that's not a good thing to do. But I also have no idea. Maybe here in the other corner, which you don't see anymore. So maybe in this corner and then I can shift everything but I just don't know how that would look like so maybe we will do some rearranging before I leave I'll try not to because that would be also crazy I have also a couple of seed pods on my Hoyas so there will be more seedlings my seedlings have recovered and they're doing really well on my flagellata seedlings which we absolutely need to separate as well they are overcrowding the pot 
in which they are in. So those are essentially my chores for the month of March. I would like to hear yours. I would actually like to look at the chores in the book for the month of March. First thing, I'm not kidding you, people who understand Serbian. <laughs> First thing it says, shopping. Shopping, I have been doing it right, shopping. It says, it is a moment to uh, rejuvenate your plant collection, including a lot of the orchids. I'm doing, I'm doing things right according to this book. What will you say? I'm doing things right. Watering, you're, you're supposed to increase the watering, which I have, okay, I'm not doing that by the book. Start to fertilize the plants in the middle of March, as what the book says, and you know, start sowing the plants replanting, which we will do, planting new ones, and bonsai. Well, we do not have bonsai. We are right on track with a lot of these things. Before I leave you, I think we can do a tiny plant chore here, which will be to water the plants. What are my cuttings? So we are going to empty out this Ratsta definitely in the next week and just figure out what are we gonna do with these plants. I honestly don't believe some of these didn't sell like this, Jennifer. No one wanted this. Why? These are also the ones that didn't sell. No one wanted these. There are a couple of Peninsularis. One is there. A lot of Penny Streets, which honestly I do get why no one wanted Penny Street. They rooted really, really well in this cocoa husk. It's amazing for rooting the plants. And then some Verticillatas that I did end up rescuing from my big plant. This is the EPC 997, stable pink spot splash. No one wants you. How does that feel? In a shocking turn of events, another thing happened that wasn't great. My microphone turned off and essentially I kept talking into nothing here, but don't worry, I did not say anything of great importance, but I think we can agree this week has not been the best for Miro. <laughs> Let's hope next week is better. I don't actually know what I was talking about here. I know it was definitely not of importance. I also decided to keep these two Hoya lobbies for my grow wall. I do need to repot them and probably pot them together. I was also surprised that this Hoya Fauziana has rooted. I thought this one was gonna die. This is the last cutting that I have. I think I've made five cuttings and that one was the most worrisome because it had serious stem rot. I was also wondering if I should keep this Hoya Carey splash. You know, I don't love Hoya Carey, but I do love these splashy leaves. I don't know. We'll have to think about that. But anyways, it is the end of the week and I know this video is going to be late and it is what it is. I know it's a bit of a different video and I hope that you still enjoyed the format. Let me know what your March chores will be. I will see you very soon in the next video. And I'm saying bye here. It's very awkward. I know. I would like to take some time to thank all of my patrons for their incredible support. A massive shout out to my $5 patrons. My three anonymous patrons, Alex von Siebenthal, Amber Clear, Amber Kosher, Anne Margaret Moen, Angela Bernard, Angela Parrish, and C. Aspen Drake, Patsy Bougie Panda, Brad Noble, Catherine Molina, Colleen Coyle Levi, Daniela Danub Daniels, Daria Kaminska, Dili Heredia, Deanne Sikorsky, Dipanjali Rao, Edith W, Erin Keenan, Ellen Isaacson, Fera, Gathering Moss, Gina Geise, Go Green Tropical, Heather Uppencamp, Hoji Scott, God, Hoya Heather, Jamie Arsenault, Yana Griffin, Jessica Chia, Yavin Dinot, Kara, Catherine P, Casey Gross, Kelly Cool, Kelly Gallagher, Kelso, Kimberly Polka, Kiwi Mochi, Christy Ehrlich, Leplan de Steph, Lisa Marie, MPLS, Lori J. Revert, Mandy Milliken, Marcel Har, Marcelino Novosansky, Maria Stein, Marina Yarmolik, Maria West, Maris B, Marty Miller, Mary Rose, Melissa Walker, Michael Curley, Michelle Heron, Nicole Ferranti, Mirka Grun Roos, Moa Edmund, Naili Yang, Niha Basu, Nicole Maroni, Nguyen, Nita Macy, PJ Plan the Druid, Rachel Peterson, Robin L. Jennings, Sandra Cornelius, Sherry Kumar, Stephanie H2O, Tessa Martin, Stia B, TJWO, Trista Bailey, Tristan Thomas, Wendy, Wendy Foreman, Wendy Rossman, Zenia Green, Youth of the Wallamut, Zurtarama, and Zlokov Nipponi. A big thank you to my $3 patrons, Angelina Farnan, Kilon, Constance, Catherine Parsons, Lindsay Ann, Lisa Helling, Nella, Nerdy Kathy, Sykes, Zara, Ringlov, and Tang Wat, and Asriya Kool. And a thank you to my $1 patrons, one anonymous patron, Alice Borland, Brenda 
Chaco, Christina Greengrass, Colleen Coyle Levi, Couture Helvetica, Emilia Bronson, Joanna Pearson, Jolie Sullivan, Jonas Bayer, Hjort Larsen, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Chris Perez, Lauren M, Lori Ann Subramaniam, Elizabeth Fernandez, Millie Spicer, Olivia Chen Muller, and Tracy the Eye Miller. <laughs>